Peace. This is Jamal Robinson with 720astrology.com. Today's date is May 23rd, 2024. At the time of recording this, it is 11, 12 a.m. Central Standard Time. Want to talk briefly about today's full moon, which the partile aspect has already passed. So I'm late but we're still in the energy. So I figured it doesn't hurt to talk about it still. Full moon in Sagittarius at two degrees of Sagittarius. That's where the moon was this morning. That partile aspect was at 8.53 a.m. Central Standard Time. So I want to talk about some significators around this full moon. The title I gave this on the thumbnail is full moon in Sagittarius, the goal in sight. You'll notice that I have the centaur uh, kind of sitting behind the letters on the thumbnail and the centaur has a bow and he's pulling on the bow. He's loading up tension. He's pulling that arrow back. And if you look at the symbol for Sagittarius, it is the arrow that is preparing to be shot or projected with the bow. We'll go to the whiteboard quickly. This is the symbol for Sagittarius. This is the arrow that is going to be shot from the bow. So Sagittarius is a projectile energy. That's why Sagittarius, we think about philosophy. We think about a truth because they all are dealing with some form of projecting. You see, Sagittarius works on the axis with Gemini. And when we talk about that root, Pro, which means to go ahead of, before. What it is actually talking about is sight, sight. The axis of Gemini and Sagittarius in one regard is about sight. If you look at the keywords associated with the two, and these are fundamentals of learning astrology, simple stuff. Gemini keyword, I think. Sagittarius keyword, I see. But here's where we can show how they both correlate to sight. When the keywords for Gemini say, I think, another word for I think is I look. See, Gemini, the reason Gemini contains a certain degree of genius is because it's looking at everything. Gemini is the, the little boy who never grew up. It's Peter Pan. It's the wondrous child from a biblical standpoint. You can't enter the kingdom unless you come as a child, which means unless you go back to your childlike mind, which was curious wondering, looking. Gemini is looking, which is another word for I think. I think I look because thinking is seeing with the brain. All right. Now, when we get to the space of Sagittarius, which sits across the axis from Gemini, meaning they feed on each other. Gemini being the student, to be studious is to be looking, studying, looking, thinking across from that Sagittarius, then would be the teacher, because you can't be a great teacher until you've been a great student. Great students make great teachers. Sagittarius is also, I see. Gemini is, I look. Sagittarius is like, ah, but now I see. Same thing, but two different things at the same time. See, looking 
is recognizing details, Gemini. Sagittarius is by looking, I now realize what I have looked at. I see it. So Sagittarius becomes a perspective. Gemini is the question. We ask the questions so we can then develop a perspective. And that perspective represents a projection because the arrow is being projected far beyond where we are at the moment which is what Sagittarius ultimately represents. Seeing down, if you know Sagittarius, I'm a Sagittarius rising, okay? So I greet people with philosophy, philosophical, always looking down the road. I'm the idea person. People come and say this and that, you know, they can be talking about their business. I love talking about money. And I'm like, well, why won't you try it this way? Or, you know, if you such and such and such, you know, looking down the road, projecting ideas, a vision, that's Sagittarius. And that vision is fed by a natural inquisitive nature, Gemini. So this full moon is a moon where there's a, a need for perspective. There's a need for a philosophy. There's a need for... um. Uh, efforts to be striving towards a goal. There's a need for adventure. And I want to say this about adventure and I'll, I'll, I'll stop sharing this for a second. When we use that word adventure, we use it connotatively as in adventure is Indiana Jones. We're having fun. We're about to go on an expedition and Ooh, we associate adventure with fun. And there's nothing wrong with fun because it helps to maintain the youthfulness within us. But the word denotatively, denotation is different from connotation. Connotation is what you think it means. Denotative or denotation is what it really means. And so denotatively adventure, you got to look at the vent part. And if you know, um, any little Spanish, the, uh, uh, the, the word for the to be form of to come in Spanish is bengtar. I think it is. I don't, it's been so long. I think it's bengtar, V E N T A R. You can't correct me if I'm, but it's something with the root bent, you know, in Spanish, the V is pronounced with a B bent. So V E N T vent. So to the advent is the coming. You think about the Adventists, that, that you know, the, the kind of cult uh, Christian sect. We're waiting on the coming, you know. Um, but either way, that's what advent. It's, it's the recognition of something coming, but it's also going. That's what adventure is. It is the coming and the going. So the adventure associated with Sagittarius is ultimately about freedom. The freedom to come and go as I please. Sagittarius is mutable. To be able to come and go represents a mutation, a change. There has been the fixture of the Scorpio season. But now it's time for something to change. It's time to take it to the next level. Sagittarius, mutable, cadent, learning. Learning promotes change. All right. So with those basics covered around just the, the energetic template of this full moon, I want to pull up the chart for the exact time of the full moon. If I had done my due diligence and had presented this early, Either way, it still applies at the, again, at the time of the full moon, the aspect formed at two degrees, 55 minutes of Sagittarius and Gemini. That's the axis full moon tension swelling in the waters on the planet. 
things are coming to the surface. Truths coming to the surface with this moon. Here's some things I want to point out. Let's deal with some of the potential challenges or negatives. Not a lot, but let's 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 deal with those first. First thing is, as I always say, you want to look at the so-called minor aspects or the non-Ptolemaic aspects. When we overlook those, we miss things. All right. So we have a 45 degree angle between Mars and the sun. In astrology, we refer to that as a semi-square, okay? So it is not as acute as a square, but it does load tension. It does bring some tension. And when we have uh, the sun and Mars and hard aspect to each other, that tension can be around ego. Ego inflamed, feeling threatened, being more aggressive and combative than necessary, feeling the need to exert my will. Cause we're talking about things that are around the ego. All right. So that's one of the, the, the potential negatives here with this aspect, but I want to, I want to talk about the positives now. And we had to deal with that because we got to make sure we see some of the potential pitfalls that could challenge what's going on in the sky right now. And what's going on is we have a beautiful conjunction between the sun, Venus in her domicile and Jupiter and Venus and Jupiter are on the cusp of change. They're at the anoretic degree, 29 degrees of Taurus. So this is like something that could pop. This could be some type of opportunity. This could be something that is on the horizon. We have the sun, which is already in Gemini. It's like, hey, y'all, there's something new going on over here. And Venus and Jupiter are together. And be mindful that Venus and Jupiter in traditional astrology are the two benefics. Venus, the lesser benefic, and Jupiter, the greater benefic. They are together in Venus is sign and they've joined up. Is there an opportunity that is presented to us? And so the reason I wanted to talk about Mars and, and the sun semi-square first is because we need to be patient, which has been like the theme I've been kind of continuously, uh, this the resounding theme for 2024, especially patience. But at the same time, it's like, hey, but I, but there are some potential opportunities here. So how can we be patient when opportunity is knocking? Because I see the Venus and Jupiter sun conjunction as opportunity is knocking. But then we got Mars like, man, I'm ready to go. Get out of my way. You're holding me up. So how can we balance the two? How can we mitigate these? And so simply is by not losing sight of the goal. That's Sagittarius. Sagittarius always got some big idea, always got some vision. And a lot of times it's, it's ingenious, but we know Sagittarius can have these genius ideas and then don't follow through. But if we can keep sight of the goal, Sagittarius, and incorporate a little bit of that Saturn into the mix, well, Saturn takes it and holds it and say, now we're going to take these steps towards this goal. We're going to climb this mountain. If we can incorporate some of that Saturnian flavor into this, to hold this site, it can help mitigate the impatience and the coarseness that can come up from the harsh ego expression of Mars in a semi-square to the sun. And this is, this is, can, this can be, this is not like it's a major, it's not a square. So it's not as acute, but it can be this, this, it can be a quick little something where we, we lose sight of the big picture, the big idea. And so this is just, just a reminder, keep your eye on the prize, keep your eye on the prize, because what's coming up is that Jupiter is going to make his transit. In the next couple of days, it will make his ingress. I think it's on the 26th. 
it's going to make its ingress into Gemini. And we're going to, I'm going to come back and talk about that, about Jupiter in Gemini, because when Jupiter is, is in Gemini, it's always a setup for six years down the road. When Jupiter arrives back in its domicile, which is Sagittarius. So there's an opportunity for learning or for looking Gemini right now. We are looking right now. We're looking at all the details that are going to ultimately support the goal or the sight. We're looking so that we can eventually have sight. We are learning so that we can be learned. We are students so that we will become the teacher. We are seeking so that we will eventually find a perspective. So there's a lot of, in, uh, uh, there's a lot of invitations and there's a lot of possibility in the air with this full moon. And it's a lot of truth. There's an energy of truth coming to, to the surface. Some people may be getting indications right now of where that arrow has landed. Where has the arrow landed? Because again, Sagittarius as the centaur has the projectile and it is loading up tension on that bow and it's going to shoot this projectile way out somewhere. So right now we're doing the due diligence of being present, being in the moment, bringing what Taurus has taught us from this previous season, which is to be mindful of what we have in our hands, i.e. manifestation, and to work with them. Go back and watch the video I did on the raccoon. And what I said, you know, I talked about how we had a raccoon in our house. And, and the raccoon teaches us to, the, the word raccoon means he, he who works with his hands. And raccoons are adaptive. They're very mutable. They will change and adapt to the situation at hand. And they're very intelligent. They pay attention to all the details, Gemini. So be adaptive right now, be present, pay attention to the details. And in doing so, you will see where your arrow has landed. Meaning, meaning you look into the future. There is a portal open right now to see into the future. We study the known to know the unknown. So that's it for our little discussion around this full moon energy. There's a lot of hopefulness that is available to capture and to work with. So make sure you're present in your life for private readings. I'm available through my website, 720astrology.com. Know the stars to know yourself. Peace.